here I have an aftermarket battery for a 2008 MacBook Pro. Now I purchased this earlier this year. It's only probably seven months old maybe, I don't know, something like that. The MacBook's not been used for a while and it's basically dead. It's not charging, it's saying bad battery replaced. It's only had two cycles on it. Because <laughs> I hadn't used it in four months because it's been sitting in a motorhome. Uh, we keep this particular machine. It's dead. So it's not been charged up for four months. So I'm going to pull this battery apart and try and recharge it. So make sure you stick around. Check it out. And also don't forget to subscribe. Give us a bit a thumbs up and that sort of stuff if you like the video. You know, if you've not been here before, subscribe. If you're interested in electronics and MacBooks. Because I'm going to be charging this thing up and seeing what happens. Might go bang. Might not. Might give you lots of smoke and fire. Don't know. And I wanted to go and try it out and charge it up. Thinking I'd probably be charging up. And I've got four MacBooks here which I had to charge up and three of them charged up just fine and this one wasn't happy. Now this is using an aftermarket battery. Um, I think most of the other ones are actually as well but they were all 0% charge and they've gradually come up and they're all working okay like this one over here for example which you can see just off screen that's actually now, you can't quite see it, but it's 52% up there. Don't forget my merch. Now with this battery here I thought I'll pull it apart because it's just a couple of screws in one end or three screws each side, six screws total you get that out, and you get the whole pack out. I thought I'd check it out because I thought I'll just check to see if it's swollen or anything like that, you know, in case it's been over this charge because it's been sitting and maybe damaged. Anyway, pack looks fine. There's no swelling. Both sides look absolutely fine. There's no signs of swelling. So I thought I'd have a look at this. This is the actual charge connector here, obviously the interface cable here. This is for 2008, uh, 15 inch. I should probably point it out. What I found though, I just looked where the wires go and. I'll just tap into it, check the voltages, and maybe manually recharge the cells directly um, to, to get it recovered. And I sort of looked at it and thought, oh, that doesn't look very good. I thought I'd show you. Do you see what's wrong here? Do you see it? Do you? What looks wrong here? Any ideas? Hmm? Spotty it? You have? Well done. Good on you. Right there. The zero volt terminal isn't soldered. Or at least it's barely soldered. Certainly not flowed on this side. And this side of the terminal has got basically nothing there. I wonder if that could explain some of the issues with this battery because being off the market I thought the quality's not be great anyway. I did have some issues with some weird behaviour from it. Maybe that's something to do with it, you know, the fact that the zero volt is not actually soldered. Mm -hmm. Also, this screw here, when I went to get it out, it's actually stripped. It's completely rounded off. So I had to use my uh, side cutters and dig into the sides and unscrew it that way. It works fine. Does the job. But yeah, so I'm going to resolder this. Then I'll probe around, see what voltages I get, and uh, potentially recharge it. Now naturally, because I'm going to be soldering this, I'm going to be blocking the camera. You can almost guarantee it, can't you? But also got to be careful because this is a live battery to not accidentally short across any terminals because that would be bad. <laughs> Who knows, it might get some flames and smoke or something. Alright, let's try this. Come on, fly your bugger. That really does not want to flow. The wire is pulling out which is also not good. Let me reassess this situation here. See the wire's pulling out this side, that's not what I want to happen. Because it's all twisted around itself. Let's try this again. Just get some flux, I think I need some flux on it. Of course the bloody camp's got in the way. Dark now the camp's covered in flux. Lovely. Lovely jubbly, as the old trotters would say. Right. Let's try this way, remelt it again, push the wire back up. Okay, that's looking much better. So that's now soldered much more nicely. There you go. Being a bit of lead free on there, you know, it's going to be a bit yuck. Is that part that's fell off? It is. Capacitors fell off, see that? Hmm. Okay, I guess I'll be putting that back on again then. 
<laughs> Guess it wasn't sold on the table either. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Right, let's uh, let's get some flux on that and sell that back on. Uh, I don't like doing this with a live battery on it though. Pretty sure it could go quite badly. Alright, some flux across those. I think I might, I don't know, I can't really use hot air on this. We'll put the capacitor back on. That can also explain why it played up a little bit. <laughs> Decent tweezers. It could be flames yet. I hope not, anyway. I can't grab it on the sides, or on the ends, like I'd like to. No, anyway, we'll grab that on there like that. It's one side on. All right, I can get the tweezers off now. To relax slightly. Bloody hell. Yeah, top quality soldering right here. Right, I think that's on now. Anything else going to fall off? You reckon? Oh man. Alright, what do you reckon? Anything else going to fall off there? Yeah, it's a bit crooked. I oh, know. I think the other parts are right. Very interesting. Let's check the voltages. Let's see what we get out of this thing. See how dead it is. So, 0 volt to what's marked as 4 volt. Three point one, that's pretty low. But not that bad. And to eight volt. Ooh, is that four point nine? That could be different. Let's get it on there like that. One point seven, no, that's, that's why it doesn't that's why you're not happy. <laughs> yes, that second pack is not happy. Okay, so the four to eight volt sec section is bad. So 1.7 volts, that's pretty bad. I might be able to recover it, but it's not looking good. Not for that voltage. Now the question is how the hell am I going to get onto this thing? That's the yellow wire here. There's 12 volt up here as well. Let's check that one. Let me check that. So let's go from the 8 volt here at negative to the 12 volt up here, which also isn't actually soldered that well. Actually, I might look at that as well. 1.5. So yes, yeah, so we've got two sets of packs which are pretty bad. Hmm. Might have to like solder a little wire on each side here and take it off and then clip on some charging circuitry and hope for the best. Right, I'm getting kind of ready here. I've set this to 4.5 volts, so I've got a mess. I've got this MacBook and stuff here all charging up at the same time. So let's click this on. Power supply is already turned on. So this should be like 8 volts across here, and as you know, it's 1.5 each cell, which is about 3.1 or so rounded up. So let's see if I'm going to stick this on. Okay, it's maxing out, but it is coming up. So what I'm going to do is set this up so it won't fall off, and then I'll leave it. And hopefully we can recover it. Hopefully. See, the current's already dropped right down. So that's good. So let's just um, button the voltage up some more. Let's go 5.5 volts. Is that the way I can't see what I'm doing? Of course it's going to be in the way. I will move it. Okay. There you go. Putting in half an amp. 5.5 volts. It's probably a bit too much. Let's um, drop the current down a little bit. Let's go 200 milliamps. I don't want to bring it up too quickly, you know. It's when they're this low. You really have to take a journal. So don't I'm only charging up two packs of the six of the sorry four packs of the six. So I'm charging two in series. So what I should also do is probably just double check the voltages in case one pack's being charged more than the other. because um, that could also be a bad thing, although I'm only at five volts right now, so it can't be that bad. I might have to do each set individually. So let's have a look. See we're tracking here, so we've got to uh, stick that one on, that one there. 
2.7 and climbing upwards, that's good. And let's check the other one, it's going to read negative. If I can get this probe on again. Two point seven and increasing. Cool. That's important because what can potentially happen if you're charging two cells in series is one cell will be discharged as the other one charges, and you can actually flip the polarity around if you're not careful, which is why you mustn't use mixed batteries and devices like AI batteries, AAs and stuff like that. If you put in mixed battery types or old batteries and new batteries, what happens is the old batteries will discharge and then reverse polarity and the new batteries will discharge into them. So that's why you have to be careful about battery packs and, and how you charge them and make sure they're balanced. That's why it's important. So there is an imbalance in the voltages. But right now I'm just trying to get some power into them, get them up a little bit. What I'm hoping will happen is I'll get it up to a point where it's okay and the MacBook will then charge it using the charge circuitry on here to balance it. That's the plan. I want this to do the balancing. Um, but I need to get it up to a point where it will actually do that first. Because obviously, obviously right now, it's not in a good way. So I'm just going to leave this going for a little while, see so the current's come down now. So let's give it more voltage. Give it another volt. And we'll just let it stabilise something. That will come up once the current starts dropping off again. I'm not going to chuck an amp into it and all that because that will just potentially catch fire. Um, even 200 milliamps might be a bit much really. Once it gets to 6.5 volts, I mean that's going to be 3 volts a pack if it balances out. So that might be enough to get the charge circuitry to work, start working if I power it on the MacBook. So, yeah. I won't charge up fully, I just, I just want to try and do a bit of a manual charge here. Get them above probably 3.2 volts or whatever the bottom cutout might, voltage might be for these packs. And um, I might go 3.3, that should be pretty generous then. And um, do that on each pack. And then I'll chuck it in a MacBook and try and charge it in that and hopefully it will come back. But yes. I mean, there's no bulging. If it was bulging, I'd be sort of saying, no, no, that's no good. So there's no bulging at all. Absolutely fine. So I'm not worried about that at all. But the voltage is gradually climbing up. It's getting there. So, yeah, fun. So I thought, let's look at the back of these packs here and actually notice that the date is 2015. So these are not new cells. These are old cells. So maybe these are Apple original ones and they've been pulled out of another pack and shoved into one of these packs or something to resell them. I I don't know, maybe they clean off the markings off the original pack and put their own markings on to make it like it's an aftermarket. I've got no idea. But I purchased this earlier this year. Yeah, so they're already five years old. Hmm. Interesting. But there's no bulging, so, you know, cover that bad. I thought I'd better record this. I've started putting the pack back together. I've got uh, two of those packs, which is there's two packs I was charging series. They're up to about 3. 6 volts or so now and the other pack is 3.1 something so that should be enough to actually get the thing to charge hopefully so I was going to chuck it back together put it in the MacBook and uh, we'll see if it comes to life or not now the MacBook is currently charging the original battery the old one which I replaced with this one strangely the other battery was still fine obviously it's been sitting in a box so it didn't really matter too much all right, so all I've got to really do is get this all back together again. Now, what I've done with these wires is actually they've actually just like twisted it around. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I'm a fan of that, but I'll try to try and figure out how I can get those wires stuffed in there and that sort of stuff. So let's shove the pack right down. I should be able to get it down the gap actually. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, that looks all right. Let's push down. There's actually a gap. So I'll shove these in, and hopefully I can get the thing to actually fit. There we go, that's in there. Let's chuck the screws in. And I'll go and drop it into, into the computer. Now, the screw that was stripped out, I've actually swapped it out for one of the ones which is holding this end panel on. So, at least the thing should stay together. So, I was going to chuck some of these in here. I'll chuck a few screws on one side. And then I'll go and do, go and try it out. See if it works. Fingers crossed. See if I've recovered it. Because um, obviously the... the protection circuitry on the cell bank um, would say no I'm not charging that because the battery's voltage is too low but they're not blown up so anyway let's go plug it in all right so it's plugged in and as you can see it says zero percent yes the laptop is on its side if it's a bad battery it will say 100 percent and it will be given error and that's not the case 
So if I go to the menu here, he says 48 minutes until full. So yes, it's doing the job. So it looks like I managed to recover that battery. We'll see if it carries on working okay. I'll let it sit for a while. But when they're really flat like this, they put in very little current. It does like a trickle charge. Yeah, I know, it's all wonky and everything. You can see down the bottom there, my fingers aren't in the way. So the main ball rails is only doing 870 milliamps. So it's putting in very little current right now. Once it starts charging properly, that'll come up. Um, you can see the wattages as well, pretty low. Main ball, SO rail, wattages, and system total. So, yep, still on its side. So, here we go, it's charging okay. Charging, yes. Um, capacity is currently remaining or charge remaining milliamp hours is 11 so yes it's only got 11 milliamp hours according to the balance circuitry so yeah at least it is actually working so that's really good I'm happy with that it's now saying 1% charge so that's good um, it's gradually coming up so I'm going to leave this here on charge to see if it will come back so I don't recommend doing this yourself unless you're extremely careful. I mean, this was a bit of an experiment for me really, just to see if I could recover that battery because I know that's a brand new battery, at least brand new to me. So the fact it's got dated 2015 makes it a bit more suspicious, but there's no bulging on the packs, anything like that. So the pack themselves look absolutely fine. So I thought I'll just try it, you know, give it a, give it a go and see if I can recover it. You know, out of curiosity more than anything. But if your pack is bulged at all, if there's any swelling, do not try to recharge it. It will go badly for you. If not now, later. All right? Because they will just go. All right? You have to be careful with that. So this is the same I wanted to try out and thought it might be interesting to show you. And yes, I know things are wonky and sideways and twisted. And yeah. Because it's staying on its side, the battery's on the bottom. Because these actually have a battery cover you can remove. This is a 2008, so back when Apple decided that it would allow you to change your battery. Hmm. So this is the Apple original battery that was in it, which was still working. So I plugged that in and it started charging. So if I couldn't recover the other battery, it wasn't a complete disaster, because I actually kept the original one. The reason I replaced this battery is because it's got 797 cycles on it. And it's an old battery, right? so I thought I'd you know, just replace it. Because I did have some weird behaviour from the laptop from time to time. A couple of times it just did something a bit odd. And I thought maybe it's the battery playing up because, you know, the sensors could be playing up. It might, it might have actually been something else now. I'm not entirely sure. I think it might have been something different in the end. It certainly seems interesting. But anyway, this battery still works. So the worst case comes to, I'll go back to this one. This battery is heavier than the other battery, which is fairly interesting. Um, I don't know it's got a date on it. This is 2008 copyright on that side. This side doesn't say a date. Not that I can determine anyway. It does have a serial number. You want to know how to do the dates on these? Yeah, there's a the serial number there. See that? Here it is. There's a the serial number. Can you determine the date from that? I don't know, maybe. No idea. So if you found it interesting, give us a thumbs up, like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you've not been here before, that kind of stuff. I always forget to say it's the beginning. I should really should say it's the beginning. Catch you later. And I'll see you in the chat. Comments. Whatever. Around. Somewhere. You know. Yeah. It's YouTube. You know what he's doing. Bye. So over here I've got an Apple battery which I, well, an aftermarket Apple battery for a 2008 MacBook 